What's that? This. Hmm. This is my owl. It's part of, it's, it's staying here, it's my mascot. Moral support. Today I wanted to show you how to use Nikon's Heritage Glass on the Nikon Z cameras. So vintage aesthetics and manual focus lenses on cutting edge sensor technology that can be found in the Z6 and Z7 using the FTZ adapter. A lot of people wonder why the Nikon manual focus lenses are still so popular. Uh, now I'm talking AIS lenses, but also AI and pre-AI lenses. So lenses going right back to 1959 can all be used on the Nikon Zs using the FTZ adapter. The reason that these are still so popular is because Nikon were originally known as a glass manufacturer and a lens producer. They produced lenses for other companies like Canon and Leica before they started making lenses and bodies of their own brand. Uh, sorry, I got distracted. I missed out the word brand and just lagged. Nikon manual focus lenses provide a completely different aesthetic to modern day glass. So if you're looking for something more artistic or you like a little challenge, then these lenses are perfect for experimental photography and also for gorgeous portraits. I'm gonna show you how to get the very best out of these manual focus lenses on a Nikon Z because the Z cameras have an advantage that other cameras don't. Now, if you've seen our other video on how to tell the difference between AIS, AI and pre-AI, then you'll know that you can't mount a pre-AI lens on a digital SLR. This is because the mount doesn't have the cutouts needed to fit on there. However, the FTZ doesn't have that problem. You can mount any of these lenses on the FTZ and we've done a few slightly riskier videos where we've put lenses you're not supposed to put on there on there, and they work as well. So when you mount an AI, AIS or pre-AI lens, the principle is the same. You match up the little black dot on this one or the white dots on the others to the white dot on the FTZ and then you click it into place. Now, the first thing that you will need to do is tell the camera what the lens is. So I'll show you how to do that in the menu. So in the setup menu, which is the spanner icon, you've got this option called non-CPU lens data. That's actually the same in all of the digital SLRs as well. You wanna choose your lens number. You can assign up to nine lenses in here. We're just gonna call this lens number one. Uh, and this is a 50 mil F2. And then you just make sure you press okay. Now. Unfortunately, you won't get any aperture information no matter what mode you're using because the camera doesn't know what aperture you've set on the lens, but it will allow you to use ISO auto and you can also obviously change your shutter speed from the camera. You're changing the aperture from the lens as normal and because the Z is very much a what you see is what you get, when you adjust your aperture, you can actually see the picture getting darker and lighter. So when you adjust your settings, obviously none of this is in focus at the moment because I'm pointing it at the table, but you can see that you can see all of your settings on the back of the camera. So that eliminates some of the mystery as to what kind of picture you're gonna get at the end of the shot. Now, one of the biggest advantages to using the Nikon Z cameras is the sensor image stabilization or in-body image stabilization, IBIS as they call it. So when you're using Z cameras, just make sure that's on by going to the photo shooting menu and you can see under vibration reduction here that you've got two options, normal and sport. Also shows you the focal length of the lens and tells you to set the focal length in the non-CPU lens data. So we've done that already. Make sure that you've got normal on for most shooting situations or if you're panning or you're shooting a moving subject or you're on a moving platform like a boat or a car, then you would use sport mode. In this case, I'm just gonna set it to normal. And now, when you look at the settings here, you can see next to 50 millimeter, the focal length, it also has the vibration reduction symbol to show you that it's on. The other very helpful thing that the Zs have and some of the newer DSLRs have is focus peaking highlights. Now, that means that you can actually see what's in focus before you take the picture. On the Zs, obviously it works also in the viewfinder as well as on the back screen. You can set it using the custom settings menu option D10. We can set it on and you can choose your sensitivity. I recommend standard for most things and you can change the color as well, which is very helpful. So you've got options for red, yellow, blue, or white there. It's also very, very helpful for video work. You can also set it to your eye menu, 
which I've done here. So you can see that I've got peaking on down there. And the benefit of that is that when you are actually manual focusing, you will see the outline of what is in or in focus or not. So when you've done it correctly, you will get something that looks like that. If you look at the back screen there, you'll be able to see that my scarf on the back of my chair is all highlighted in red. So that means when I take the picture, it will be in focus. The other thing that you can also do with this is zoom in so that you can do some fine tune focusing. Focus peaking doesn't work when you're doing that, but it does mean that you can you know, look at the very fiber of what you're trying to focus on if you wanted to. So that's helpful for a shooting aid. In summary, you've got in-body image stabilization, which you don't have in any other camera. You've got focus peaking, which is very helpful for manual focusing. You've got the ability to use pre-AI, AI and AIS lenses all on the Z cameras. And you've also got extra little things like being able to see your exposure before you take the picture, which is really, really handy. So hopefully with those little tips and uh, tricks that I've given you there, you might dig out some manual focus lenses and put them on your Z camera.